Hey there, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'll be discussing a very short and sweet topic, which is excitation contraction coupling, specifically which is occurring in a skeletal muscle. So without wasting any time, let's see what is this excitation contraction coupling. So it is the coupling of an electrical event with a mechanical event through a chemical messenger. So what do we understand when I say electrical event? The electrical event here is nothing but the generation of the action potential on the skeletal muscle membrane and the mechanical event is what the mechanical event which is occurring is the contraction of the skeletal muscle so there is something which is linking this electrical event with the mechanical event and this linking is occurring via a chemical messenger this is what is called as excitation contraction coupling in another way i can also define it as a process by which an action potential generated on the surface of the membrane is going to trigger the contraction of the muscle using the calcium okay so remember that excitation contraction coupling is neither neuromuscular transmission and hence the generation of the action potential on the skeletal muscle membrane it is nor the process of the muscle contraction it is a process which is occurring in between these two processes it is a process which is coupling these two processes okay many a times i have seen students writing neuromuscular transmission or they are writing the skeletal muscle contraction for this question just remember it is neither that nor this it is a process which is occurring in between that's why it is called as a coupling it's a process which is coupling these two things okay so in order to understand the excitation contraction coupling we have to understand a simple system in the present in the skeletal muscle which is called as a sarcotubular system sarcotubular system that itself it's giving you a meaning that it's a combination of two things one thing is sarcoplasmic reticulum another thing is tubules so what are these tubules so this is a hand drawn diagram so let's say this is our sarcolemma so what happens to the sarcolemma is that the sarcolemma invaginates deeper down into the muscle fiber and this invaginated portion of the sarcolemma is what is called as transverse tubule or it is simply referred to as t tubule because it is in the form of the alphabet t and now we are having one more structure in the sarcotubular system which is nothing but the endoplasmic reticulum of the skeletal muscle the endoplasmic reticulum of the skeletal muscle is also referred to as sarcoplasmic reticulum and this sarcoplasmic reticulum has two parts what are these two parts one is the longitudinal part and this is called as the longitudinal sarcoplasmic reticulum another one is the terminal part which is expanded part and this is what is called as terminal cistern this is called as the terminal cistern and remember this terminal cistern of the sarcoplasmic reticulum comes in close proximity to the t-tubule and one more thing is that one t-tubule is surrounded by two terminal cisternae hence they are forming three structures together hence this is called as a triad okay one more thing which we have to remember here is that the sarcoplasmic reticulum is having lots of calcium inside it okay there is a heavy concentration of calcium inside it so this much is regarding the sarcotubular system now this is the t-tubule as i have already told you and this is the terminal system the point wherein the terminal cistern comes in close proximity with the t-tubule at that point on the t-tubule there is a receptor you are seeing this receptor in the green color and this receptor is called as dihydropyridine receptor dhpr dihydropyridine receptor this dihydropyridine receptor is nothing but it's an voltage sensitive calcium channel similarly at the same level on the terminal cistern there is one more receptor which is called as ryanodine receptor ryr ryanodine receptor or these are also called as calcium release channels these are also called as the calcium release channels okay so there is a receptor which is present on the t-tubule which is called as the dihydropyridine receptor at the same level there is a receptor which is present on the terminal cistern 
ओके ऑफ द सार्कोप्लाज्मिक रेटिकुलम व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज रायनोडिन रिसेप्टर और दीज आर सिंपली रेफर्ड टू एज कैल्शियम रिलीज चैनल्स वन मोर थिंग व्हिच वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड हियर इज दैट द डाइहाइड्रोपाइरिडिन रिसेप्टर इज मैकेनिकली कनेक्टेड टू द रायनोडिन रिसेप्टर क्लियर नाउ लेट्स से देयर इज जनरेशन ऑफ action potential on the sarcolemma the nerve has stimulated and it has generated the action potential on the sarcolemma and what did i tell you in my prior classes when i was speaking regarding the neuromuscular junction and all that is that once the action potential is generated the action potential is going to propagate over the sarcolemma as well as it propagates over the t tubules so once the action potential arrives on the t tubule this action potential is going to cause activation of this receptor what is the name of this receptor this is nothing but dihydropyridine receptor so what is this dihydropyridine receptor it is nothing but a voltage sensitive calcium channel so once there is activation of the dihydropyridine receptor there is going to occur some kind of a conformational change in this dihydropyridine receptor and i told you that the dihydropyridine receptor is mechanically connected to the calcium release channels which are present on the terminal cistern of the sarcoplasmic reticulum so once this dihydropyridine receptor undergoes a conformational change it pulls this calcium release channels out so what is going to happen now this calcium release channels are opening and what is present inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum i told you that inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum there is a heavy concentration of calcium because of this now the calcium is going to be released out and the calcium is going to enter into the sarcoplasm now what does this calcium do this calcium is going to bind to troponin c and this is going to trigger muscle contraction so what is calcium's role calcium's role is that here calcium is acting like a coupling agent between the excitation and the contraction so that's why this process is called as excitation contraction coupling got this point so coming to the next point now let's say there is no impulse coming from the nerve and the membrane is repolarized okay or it is not activated at that point of time what is going to happen is again there is a conformational change in our dihydropyridine receptor and this conformational change is going to close these calcium release channels these were wait these were what these were our calcium release channels so once the calcium release channels are closed the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum is not going to enter into the sarcoplasm but still lot of calcium is present in the sarcoplasm okay and even though there is no firing from the nerve this calcium can still bind with the troponin c and it can trigger muscle contraction for that reason once the membrane is not stimulated this calcium which is present in the sarcoplasmic uh, in the sarcoplasm it will be pushed back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum now what is it which is pushing it back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum is a channel which is called as cerca okay what a cerca stands for is s stands for sarco E stands for endoplasmic reticulum. C stands for calcium ATPase. Okay, this is what is circa standing for. Sarco endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. What is its function? Its function is whatever calcium is present in the sarcoplasm that has to go back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, sarcoplasmic reticulum is already having lots of calcium inside it. That's why if there is excess amount of calcium entering into the endoplasmic reticulum or the sarcoplasmic reticulum, that is going to bind with a protein which is called as this protein which is called as calcestrin. Calcestrin. So once the calcium goes back into the 
sarcoplasmic reticulum the muscle contraction is not going to happen and the muscle is going to relax okay hope uh, you have understood this process i will just summarize the entire thing what i have told you invagination of the sarcolemma is called as a transverse tubule or it is called as a t tubule the sarcoplasmic reticulum is there and it is having two parts one is the longitudinal part and another one is the terminal cistern and the terminal cistern is coming in close proximity to the t-tubule and there are two terminal cisternae and one t-tubule okay so these are going to form triads and remember that each sarcomere is having two such triads in a skeletal muscle on the t-tubule at that point where it is coming in close proximity with the terminal cistern we have receptors which are called as the dihydropyridine receptors on the terminal cistern at the same level we have receptors which are called as the rhinodine receptors which are nothing but the calcium release channel once the action potential arrives at the level of the t-tubule what is going to happen conformational change occurs in the dihydropyridine receptor because of which there is opening of this calcium release channels and what happens is calcium enters into the sarcoplasm and calcium goes and binds with the troponin c and this is going to trigger the muscular contraction and once there is no stimulus what is going to happen the calcium release channels are going to close so that no more calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum enters into the sarcoplasm but still there is lot of calcium still remaining in the sarcoplasm and this calcium is pumped back by a pump which is present in the sarcoplasmic reticulum which is called as circa okay and if there is excessive amount of calcium which is entering into the long into the longitudinal portion of the sarcoplasmic reticulum that is going to bind with equestrin as simple as that if you have understood the concept behind the excitation contraction coupling what you are supposed to do subscribe to my channel share this video as much as possible hit the like button and if there is any doubts which you are having please do comment below okay thanks a lot i'll see you again